This week on Rugged Expeditions, Tanzania offers all kinds of wildlife you can hunt. From the tiny dick dick that lives down in the deserty area along the Serengeti, to the huge Cape Buffalo that live up in the mountains in the thick green areas. And on Rugged Expeditions, we're going after both of them. Presented by Global Rescue, there when you need us most. Most people, when you think of Africa, you're thinking of elephants, lions, giraffes, Cape buffalo, the big stuff. You forget about all the little stuff there is to hunt too, which is just as exciting and can be just as tough to hunt. I remember the first time I brought my folks to Africa. On our trip to Tanzania, which was uh, very exciting and uh, all new to me, totally new. Took them out hunting day one. They're thinking big stuff. What are we gonna be hunting for today? This is gonna be exciting. We were in the second truck and we were following along and uh, then just shortly thereafter, we came across an animal and uh, they wa waved to us to stop and be quiet and do everything. And I thought, boy, this is, you know, I'm uh, gonna see a lion or a elephant get shot or something. First thing I shot was a dick dick. Folks, a dick dick, we have a poodle. The poodle's bigger than this dick dick. These things are so small, they're like hunting a chihuahua with horns. And it was a world record or something or other. <laughs> I remember my dad looking down at the dick dick and looking back up at me and saying, we came from Seattle all the way to Tanzania to see this. this? We can't even have lunch with this. So, and that was the excitement of Tanzania for me. These small antelope, your dikers, the dick dicks, they're really a tough animal to hunt. Lots of times they're living in the jungle. As an example, the Peters diker from Cameroon. Oh, the Peters Diker, huh? Look at them, how heavy their horns are. It's got a great uh, set of horns on it. They've got this rough uh, up here on the top, which is classic of these forest dikers. Or you see the Maxwell Diker from Liberia, which we've also hunted. You gotta sneak around, they're smart. They run at the first inkling of any kind of danger. Maxwell's, Maxwell's. Yeah. It's a goodie. It's a goodie. Yeah. You get him? There, yeah. yeah, yeah, there he is. Yeah. You can see these horns are ribs right here that have the lines in these very heavy bases. They'll typically be, what, another inch and a half longer, maybe? Something like that, a real good one would be another yeah. inch longer? Yeah, a real good one, maybe another inch. But I mean, with old age, you know, he gets those ridges in the bottom and then he just starts to wear down, you know? What a great trophy, a very, very rare animal. Yeah. There's a lot more to hunting these little things than you see. Coming back to Africa is not the same unless I'm coming back to hunt with Skulk Tate. You can go through my eyes. You can go through my eyes. I've hunted with this guy for well over 20 years, killed I don't know how many Cape Buffalo with him, elephants, lions, all the dangerous animals all the planes game. It's been a great experience, the two of us getting to hunt together. One of the best PHs I've ever hunted with anywhere, and an old friend. Another super day in beautiful Tanzania. It's a gorgeous morning. The wind has laid down a bit on us, so this should be good today. This is a super spot. There's no roads in this whole region right here. This runs all the way back up to the Kenya border. Incredible country. And it's nice to be away from any kind of dirt tracks or no villages. It's all wild from here all the way up. More than a thousand square miles. It's the real heart of Africa still out here in the edge of the Serengeti on the Maasai Steppe. It's a fantastic country.
The dry plains of Tanzania can be deceiving when searching for wildlife. But for J. Allen Smith & Company, this area is prime Dick Dick territory. You know, one of the other unique animals that's only found here in Tanzania and East Africa is the Kirk's Dick Dick. They eat this green bush right here. We tried to get the name of it, but we're really not sure what the translation is, something about green bush. And they just love these things. So they've been out here in this dry riverbed and we're just seeing them one after another after another. One spot we saw 10 of them together. Great little trophy and unique. There's several different kinds of dictics throughout Africa, but this is the elusive Kirk's dictic. -dic, so we might try and put the whammy on one of these things here if we can find a big one. We were lucky in our timing for when we were hunting the dictics. -dic in that they were all down in the dry riverbed because what they like to eat grows down there at this time of year. It's awesome. The trick with dick dicks is trying to get one of them to stand still long enough that you can get a shot at them. Ideally, you might catch them at first, standing around, maybe hanging out with their buddies, but as soon as they get a whiff of you or see you, boom, they're gone. Did you see? <laughs> Good job. Nice. I'm shaking. Me too. <laughs> when I looked at him through the scope and he turned sideways and I could see his horns and that one that's going oddball, that was incredible. I mean, you'd think it was like a 60 inch kudu or something. I'm so. More than that. <laughs> I'm so jacked up about him. Holy smokes. Now, this is a trophy. I know it might be hard for some of you to believe that have never hunted the pygmy antelope of Africa, but these animals are just as tough and sometimes tougher than your big game, your kudu and your eland and things like that. These are, they're wily, they're living in this thick stuff. This one had come out in the sand river, luckily for us. To put in perspective, a really good one of these would be about that long. This thing is unbelievable. Look at this, incredible. He's kind of non-typical, bladed. The horns actually go down further into the hair here, you can see. What a animal. Gorgeous, gorgeous creature. The Kirk's Dick Dick, found only here in the Tanzanian north, up here in the edge of the Serengeti. Wow, what a beautiful trophy. Great condition, old one. Nice. What an animal. Tanzania's Mount Golai is home to many diverse species, but the unlikely animal found at the top of this elevation is the Cape Buffalo. Traversing through this region in search of Black Death is guide Skulk Tate Following closely behind is his good friend, J. Allen Smith, who's had many experiences hunting these deadly beasts.
How about that? What a bull. I've had the opportunity to hunt a lot of Cape Buffalo through my hunting career, and every one of them is unique. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks a million, man. There's a reason why they call these things Black Death. Because even though you put a ton of lead in it, that doesn't mean they're not coming. This is special, man. Thanks a million for coming. God, what a great this trip. This is bro. awesome. <laughs> favorite thing to do in the whole world but I've never ever heard of or imagined hunting them in steep terrain like this these buffalo come into these canyons and they're hiding out in here during the heat of the day then they come out into these openings so we're glassing them to see where they're at and then we make a stock on them from there most of this is all getting in tight on them it's a uh, incredible terrain, but more like what you'd expect to see an ibex in, not a Cape buffalo. The wind was staying fairly consistently moving left to right, so we decided to cut down low, work our way up on the right-hand side. No sooner had we gotten to the bottom of the hillside where the buffalo was laying than here comes a local Maasai cow herder. We've been waiting days for a perfect position like this, and now we've got a herd of cows there. On rugged expeditions, we go out even when it's raining in Africa. <laughs> we've had everything from a sandstorm to thunder. Now it's raining, but we're heading back into where we saw this buffalo this morning, and hopefully this stuff lays down a bit. We'll get some good cover, so it might not be too bad when we get in the big trees and that, but. All right, let's go. Let's go see if we can get. I'm feeling good today. I've been blessed to be able to hunt buffalo in all kinds of places throughout Africa, but never, ever have I ever hunted them on a steep mountain. This terrain looks like we should be hunting dull sheep, not Cape buffalo. After several days of glassing, we spot this lone bull coming up out of the bottom working his way up the hill. Tremendous animal. This is the kind we've been looking for. Maybe if we go to that bright green tree on the left down of him, if we can get it, it look kind of open there. If he stands up there, you'll see him. Bright green tree. Which one? Now if you look where the buffalo the is lying, saying, at yeah. like 7 o'clock. Yeah, there's a black spot and then a white spot. Yes, just on the left of that, there's a bright green tree. From there, it looks kind of open. Skalk and I kicked around a couple different options. One was going to the left and trying to come up the way that the buffalo itself had climbed up the mountain. But the wind was staying fairly consistently moving left to right. If he stands up, you might be able to see him, but I don't know. You don't think the wind's going to get us from that side? Not if we stay in the bottom. If we go a little bit up, it will get us. I think it's going like this. Maybe we can get in like, a deep shadow there. It looks like a little trail. That's it looks like it's a trail right up to him. We can try that. I don't know how else we're gonna get close to him. You and I just walk up there with that local guy. We're gonna use a cow as a decoy and just walk him right up that hill to that thing because he's laying there and all these cows come in here every day, even though they're not supposed to. These buffalo are used to these cattle coming around and being in the general area where they're at and the tinkling or the clanging of the bells certainly hid some of our breaking sticks in that. So we said, what the heck? Let's just go for it and climb up the mountain and see how close we can get to this big old dug -a boy Just as I was getting to the point where I thought, maybe this bull is gone, Skull gives me the old Sure as hell, there's a horn tip and it just moves a little bit. So now we know exactly where this thing is. The trick is to be able to get up into a position where I'm going to be able to get a shot at him. I know that when he gets up, I'm going to be looking at the tail end of a Volkswagen. These things are huge. We've got this bull at 18 yards, 
snoring. But I really needed him to get up to where I could hammer him from the side and put a good one in him and then let the chips fall where they may after that. Hey, Bull. Uh, I don't know what that second one did, but that first one did some damage. He does, he got him with you, bro. He doesn't like American accent. But, but hey, Bull did the trick. I gave him a couple right here at like 15 yards. So we're just gonna go up now and look, but we, we haven't heard the death bellow yet, so hopefully he stumbled down and then he was cutting away. But I don't know, now we're going to fix stuff. When an animal that size that you would think would get up in slow motion, jumps to his feet like a spring chicken and starts a wheel towards you. I didn't wait, I and mean, I'm not hesitating on a shot like that. I raked one right behind his ribs and tried to put it back through his front shoulder. What a bull. What a nice bull for up here. I'm just gonna make sure he's dead. Piga! Piga, I'm Jordy. Come on! Come with me, Diane. We have a little celebration now, boys. Woo! Thank you. It's not very often that Al Smith is speechless. And I honestly do not know what to say. That was the most incredible hunting experience I've ever had. I'm my favorite animal, too. I love hunting Cape Buffalo more than I love anything else when it comes to hunting. At the end of the day, every kind of hunting has its own thrills and excitement whether it's the big mean stuff up in the jungle or whether it's the little tiny antelope skidding around on the desert floor. Sometimes it's the little things that can be the biggest challenge in life. <laughs>